What's up everybody? Welcome back to GIS Chops. My name's Jeff. Today on Tool Belt Tuesday we're going to be talking about the Explorer tool. Esri combined some navigation tools with the Identify tool from ArcMap and put them into one tool and that's the Explorer tool. I'm going to show you how that tool works as well as some tips and tricks with some keyboard shortcuts. So let's get to the map. The Explore tool is located on the Map tab and it's actually the default tool when you open a new map project or a new map. Uh, it defaults to the Explore tool. It's this tool right here. Looks like a ball with four arrows going in each direction. And if you're like me and you want to be able to use that tool whenever you want instead of just on the Map tab, I right click that thing and I say uh, add to quick access toolbar. I've already done it so it's grayed out but you can see it's up here on my quick access toolbar. The explore tool is divided into two halves navigation and feature identification. So with navigation if you hover over the tool it shows you the the different things you can do for the navigation. If you left click and drag that's panning the map. If you right click and drag up and down that zooms in and out. And then with version 2.6, they just changed it. it. The clicking the mouse wheel didn't used to do anything. But with 2.6, they listened to the customers and said, hey, we need to have the mouse wheel click be uniform across all tools. So if you click the mouse wheel and drag, it's the same as left click and drag. So it pans the map. And if you're using an older version than 2.6, uh, you're going to have to up, update to get the, the mouse wheel to drag or to pan. So that's navigation. I'm not, I'm not too keen on this right click zooming. Oh, also, if you roll the mouse wheel, it zooms in and out. I, that's the way I zoom in and out. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the right click. So do whatever feels best to you. But that's how you move around in the map. Zoom out, zoom in, both ways. And then panning with the mouse wheel click and the left mouse button click. So you use the explore tool also in 3D scenes. So if we go to this scene here, if you left click, it's the same. You, you pan the map around. If you right click, it zooms in and out. But the mouse wheel, if you click the mouse wheel and drag it, it tilts and rotates instead of panning. So that's the major difference. So mouse wheel clicking tilts and pans 3D and the rolling the mouse wheel zooms in and out. If you want to change which direction it zooms, you can hit this dialog launcher and it opens to the navigation section of the options. And if you want to change which way the mouse wheel goes, you can change it to zooms out when you roll it forward. I like zoom in uh, because that's more intuitive to me. When you roll forward, it zooms in. That's how most online maps work. So that, that seems better to me. So I'm just going to change it back. So that's the navigation portion. You can see I've got a few feature layers here. And here's a trick I just learned. If you hold down the Alt key and click a layer in the map, it zooms to that layer. I didn't know that. I learned that in researching for this tool. And also I've got my back button here on the quick access toolbar. Those are the buttons I like to have up there because I use those all the time regardless of what tab I'm on. Identify features. If you click this drop down arrow on the explore tool and you can do the same up here on the quick, quick access. If you click that drop down arrow it tells you which layer it's going to identify from. So you've got the topmost layer. If I if I click there it's going to find the point because it's the topmost layer. You can change it. So if I hold down control, it identifies a group of features. So if I'm holding it down the control key here, I drag a box, it's going to identify both of my point features that are there. 
and Reynolds Creek, so it got that one. Even though I've got it in uh, top layer, it identified everything with top layer. You can change it to visible layers, so if I turn things off, they're not going to be identifiable. So there, my points weren't identifiable. You can change it to selectable layers. Here I've got everything selected. Let's turn off fires. Now I drew control. It's just going to identify my line feature because that's the only thing left. I'm going to turn on my points. Drag another box with the control down. And it got both points and lines. Then it has selected in contents. This is the one I usually keep it on because I can say I just want to identify my lines. If I have the fires selected, click on the fire, it identifies the fire layer, not the points. See, it's not getting them. It's there's there's another trick. <laughs> Control click with the explore tool pans to center on that point. There's a trick and I just figured that out. I probably knew it, just forgot it. I don't know if you noticed this when I clicked on or identified my fire layer. It has text here instead of just like the attributes you're, you're used to seeing. It's got the Thompson fire burned one, or 10,447 acres. So that's a pop-up and you can customize that pop-up, configure that pop-up to have text in it, it can have charts, it can have pictures, links. You can configure that pop-up to have quite a bit of information in it. And we'll we'll cover the pop-ups in a future video. But I thought I'd show you that and you can you can do that here. You right click the layer and you configure pop-up and that brings up this pane. And you can add these elements to it. Like if I add the carousel it puts it down here. So I just added a text element, typed in some text and added some fields. You add the field by coming up here and picking it from the list and it drops it where your cursor is. So if I come up here and pick shape length, it's going to drop it in that spot. Anyway, that's a brief introduction to uh, the pop-ups and I'll, I'll cover that more in a, in a future video. So that's it for the Explore tool. If you know a trick that I missed, let me know in the comments and I'll Highlight it in another video or I'll pin your comments so other people can see it. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, tell me a tool you'd like me to feature next time. If you want to see the rest of the tools in the Tool Belt Tuesday series, you find that right there. And then my latest video is up here and the subscribe button's up there. We'll see you next time.